But on this particular day, even though I'm on vacation, it's hard to enjoy yourself when you hear the kind of news that we just heard. And I thought it was appropriate to start with Steve Kerr, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, even though he was speaking last year in the immediate aftermath of the shootings that took place, the mass shooting that occurred in Uvalde, Texas. The reality is, is that it's apropos. It's apropos to bring that up now because the level of rage, disgust, exhaustion and exasperation that he obviously felt last year should be felt by all of us today, especially black America. Now, I'm not going to sit up there and talk to you about everything that's going on in this country, because we understand uh, that black people in this country aren't the only one with issues. There are shootings with white people taking place. There are shootings in the Latino community that are taking place. We understand all of that. Black folks are not the only ones dying. And we certainly have sensitivity to all human life, at least on this show. I can tell you that much. But I'm coming to you today as a black man. Because I alluded to this months ago, and I'm not going to back up from it now. It's an utter disgrace what's happening throughout the streets of America. And for those of you who don't know what happened as of this weekend, let me, you know, articulate what has transpired. Sunday, 1230 a.m., gunfire erupted at an annual neighborhood block party. A block party. Now, there are those of you who will sit up there and say, well, you know what? They were, it wasn't a permit. They were having a block party without a permit. Shut the hell up. That's not the point. The point is that gunfire broke out during a block party. What was supposed to be a celebration ended up. In two people dying because of gun violence and 28 people injured. 28. And by the way, um, I believe it was the fourth shooting this weekend. There was one that occurred in Wichita, Kansas, where nine people were shot. There was one that occurred in Memphis, Tennessee, where four people were shot. And And there was one that occurred in the Bronx, New York, where I was born before being raised in Hollis, Queens, New York City, born in the Bronx, where four other people were shot. It's just one of many incidences that have taken place this year. There is no doubt about that. But we're going to talk about Baltimore, Maryland, just for a second here. We'll hear in a second from Mayor Brandon Brandon Scott, along with Governor Westmore, two African-Americans that are overseeing the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. But before I even get into that, 28 individuals wounded. 15 of them were minors under the age of 18 years of age. 15. Three victims were 15 years old. One victim was 14 years old. Two were only 13 years of age. This is what's going on in the streets of America. And like I said before, there's a lot of stuff going on throughout this country. And the most heinous thing that I could possibly imagine, I think about Uvalde, Texas. I think about Sandy Hook, where little children were executed. Okay? And nothing in life appears more egregious than that. But death is death. Violence is violence. And when the hell are we going to do something? Just like Steve Kerr said, when the hell are we going to do something? Hell with the vacation. How the hell can you smile and sit back and enjoy yourself with bullshit like this happening? This is unbelievable. It doesn't seem to end. And I'm going to tell you something right now. It's incredibly alarming to me. When we think about, I, I just made sure because I'm going, I, I want to make sure. And just for those of you who will question, where's he getting this information from? How about prisonpolicy.org? How about gunviolencearchive.org? Along with various other websites. They ain't making this stuff up. Now you might ask, Stephen A., excuse me, we understand you're a black man. We get the level of sensitivity that you may have, but, but, but still in all, death is death. And I understand that. Understand that. But as a black man, I'm going to stop there first. And here is the reason why. The Latino population, the Hispanic population doesn't appear to be an endangered species. White folks in the United States of America, despite the fact that their populace has has diminished to below 60 percent to 58.9 percent to be exact. They don't appear to be an endangered species. Black folks are the ones making up 13.6% of the population in the United States of America. By the way, when I talk about the populace, did you know that in the United States of America right now, 
38% of the 1.9 million people incarcerated in this country, according to prisonpolicy.org, 38% of white of the 1.9 million. That comes up to 722,000 for those of you who don't have a calculator in front of you. You know what the black prison populace is? 38%. Identical to the white community. The difference is that the 722,000 for the black community is subtracted from the 13.6% of the population in America. Whereas the 722,000 from the white community is of their 58.9% populace. Who's in more trouble? It would happen to be us. When are we going to do something? As Steve Kerr would say, when the hell are we going to do something? I got a whole bunch of numbers here. And I made sure to look it up because I didn't want people sitting up there looking. Hey, Stephen A., I mean, what, what does this have to do with anything? I want you to pay attention. I want you to understand this. I'm looking at some of the events, areas where shooting recently occurred. Baltimore, Maryland, block party. Hollywood, Florida. Allen, Texas, May 6th, Atlanta, Georgia, May 3rd, Dadeville, Alabama, April 15th, where four people were killed and 32 were wounded. It's the East Coast, it's the West Coast, it's the South. It's states with strict and stiff gun laws and it's states with damn near no gun laws as far as I'm concerned. We can bring up the proliferation proliferation of guns in this country. Or lack thereof. We can bring it all up. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to black folks, it don't matter. Especially with us, because we in a world of trouble. What are we going to do about it? As Steve Kerber say, when are we going to do something? When are we going to do something? 28 people wounded for a black party. Gunfire breaks out. Two gunmen on the loose. They don't know who they are. They're bloviating about we going we ain't going to rest until we find them, but we can't find any witnesses that know who the hell did all the shooting. And by the way, in the state of Maryland, I'd like to know what kind of argument can be made when they grade an A minus on a Giffords gun law scorecard. I mean, states like California and New Jersey have a, a, a grading of A, so they have even stricter gun laws, but Maryland is no slouch in all of this. Maryland has some of the strictest gun laws, according to A, uh, uh, scoring an A- minus on a Giffords gun law scorecard. Gun purchases require a seven-day waiting period, and all handguns must be registered with the state police. Maryland also has a ban on assault weapons and large-capacity ammunition magazines, as well as a requirement that all purchases of handguns must complete safety training. In addition, individuals must be 21 years or older to purchase or possess firearms and background checks are required for any transfer of ownership. Fine. Why the hell have there been 130 homicides in Baltimore this year? And over 300 shootings. Is that working for you? I don't know what the hell to say. I'm not blaming anybody, meaning the politicians. But I mean, damn. When you hear about those strict gun laws and you hear about the fact that they're prioritizing it when your mayor, who is 39 years of age, Brandon Scott, campaigns on making sure to what? Reduce homicides by 15 percent each year in his term, getting them to below 300 homicides in his first year as mayor. Well, I think it's safe to say it ain't the greatest start in the world. I think that's fair to say. But before I go any further. Let's highlight for a second. From the news in Baltimore, what exactly has transpired? Play that first clip for me, y'all, please. Nikki, in that surveillance video, you can see dozens of people running through the street of that Brooklyn neighborhood. At one point, there are people that are actually ducking behind cars to take cover. Now, police telling us tonight that at least nine victims remain in the hospital. The other victims have since been treated and left. They tell us that 
15 of those victims are under the age of 18 years old. Police hammering down that message that they are not going to sleep until they find the person or persons responsible for this. And I do want to warn our viewers that what you are about to see and hear may be very disturbing. An $8,000 reward now on the table to help police track down the killers of these two victims, 20-year-old Kylas Fogbemi and 18-year-old Aliyah Gonzalez. If there is anybody near an AMBO with a white sheet that's available, I'm going to need it. Police now releasing the ages of the 28 surviving victims of Brooklyn's mass shooting. 13 are 18 years or older, 15 are 17 years or younger. There you have it. There you have it. And of course, we're going to hear the regular stuff that we always hear. And I'm not questioning the sincerity or lack thereof of a mayor or a governor. I'm just talking about the futility of words, which is why I started off the show by airing Steve Kerr's exasperation over yet the latest shooting. Here is Mayor Brandon Scott, and this is what he had to say in regards to the shooting that took place last night in Baltimore, Maryland. Listen to this. Someone out there knows, uh, and we want everybody who was out there, somebody knows who did this. I don't care if it's the parents, the brother, the wife, uh, the girlfriend of those who are responsible. We need you to say something. We need you to treat this as if someone had taken the life of your son, your daughter, your father, your brother. We need you to do that and step up and do the right thing. And to those who carried out the, the, the act, we will find you. We will bring you to justice. But again, uh, this brings and highlights not just for Baltimore, but for our country, the need to deal with the flow of illegal guns into our communities, especially from neighborhoods outside of them. Uh, we will continue to be focused on that here in Baltimore, but our country has to be focused on that as well. I appreciate where he's coming from. Again, as a reminder, white folks make up 58.9% of the population. Hispanics or Latinos make up 19.1% of the population. African-Americans, black folks make up 13.6% of the population. Yet white folks and black folks make up 38% of the 1.9 a piece, by the way, 38% a piece. White and black folks make up the 1.9 million people in the United States of America who are incarcerated. I got more stats for you before I get into what the mayor had to say. April 26, 2023 report from the Wallet Hub on top five homicide rates per capita by a city in the year 2023, which is now only six months old. Memphis is number one. New Orleans is number two. Baltimore is number three. St. Louis is number four. Detroit is number five. Oh, by the way, um, Memphis. 64.6% black. New Orleans, 58.1% black. Baltimore, 61.6% black. St. Louis is just at 44.8% black. And then, of course, Detroit is at 77.9% black. You see where I'm going? You see where I'm going? They figured it out. They figured it out. Black folks are rendering ourselves an endangered species. We're doing this to each other. Now, I know that it's not the popular thing to say. And there are going to be people out there, particularly from the African-American community, that's going to be about the business of, you know what, why you got to go there? Because somebody has to. That's why. 